when we talk about entropy, we're also talking about randomness. And we can look at this in a simplified manner if we look at the behavior of two molecules. Uh, in this case, example A has two molecules colored red and blue. If we open up the valve between the two bulbs, the molecules are free to move between either bulb. And if you look at example B on the screen, you can see that the molecules can take any one of four possible arrangements. And these are called microstates, and we'll look at those a little bit later. But for now, consider what are the odds that both molecules will start out or, or end up on the same side. You can work this out pretty easily. Uh, the odds that one molecule, the blue one, for example, will end up on the same side is one and two. So out of the four possible arrangements, the blue molecule ended up on the left-hand side twice. Uh, so that's two of the options out of four total options, or the odds are one in two. You could also have done this by looking at uh, the chances of the molecule showing up on the right-hand side. And again, two out of the four options. So again, the odds are one in two. So the odds for any given molecule ending up on the left-hand side or the right-hand side is one and two. Because we have two different molecules, the odds that both will end up on the same side are one and two times one and two. We can generalize this to say that the odds of any number of molecules ending up on the same side is one and two to the n. In our case, one over two to the two the odds of both of the molecules ending up on the same side is one and four. Now we can scale that up to three molecules with two possible options, uh, the left side or the right side, and you would end up with a value of one over two to the three. So if you have three molecules, the odds of them all ending up on the same side is one and nine. And that's the randomness that's involved with two or three molecules moving between two different locations. Uh, imagine we scaled this up even further and we looked at an entire mole worth of molecules. That's a very large number, and if you actually do the math out on it, you'll find that the probability of all 6 times 10 to the 23 molecules ending up on the same side is very close to zero. And this only considers a mole of molecules that have two possible locations. In reality, molecules can move all over the place. They can move uh, translationally or rotationally or vibrationally. They can move up and down and side to side and forward and backwards. So in reality, the complexity is enormous and the math involved gets equally complicated. A scientist named Boltzmann described the concept of entropy on the molecular level like we just described with a couple of molecules moving back and forth. And Boltzmann decided that temperature was very important to describing entropy. And as a reminder, temperature is just a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules in a sample, and therefore temperature is related to movement. Kinetic energy and movement are in intrinsically linked. So there are several different ways that molecules can move. Uh, they can move translationally, which is the movement of the whole molecule uh, in a plane, so side to side, front to back, up and down, or any combination of those values. They can move vibrationally, which is the bonds can stretch and bend, and they can move rotationally, which is that the entire molecule can rotate around some axis. So all of these types of motion are possible, and they can all happen independently, or they can happen simultaneously. And all of these different modes of motion uh, translate into a huge number of possible positions and velocities and effectively different, kinet different kinetic energy values that individual molecules inside a sample can have. Now, Boltzmann envisioned the motions of a sample of molecules uh, happening at a particular instant in time. Imagine taking a snapshot of the motion. And he referred to this kind of snapshot at any given point in time 
as a microstate. So a given microstate only applies for an instant. Uh, if you change anything about the system at all, you have a different microstate, whether that's moving a single molecule one fraction of a centimeter to the left, or heating it up, or cooling it down, or adding energy by shining light on it. Any change at all gives you a separate new microstate. And every thermodynamic state has a specific number of possible microstates associated with it. Those number of microstates are given the value w. And there is an equation that uses the number of microstates to determine the entropy. So in this equation, S is the entropy, K is the Boltzmann constant, and W is again the number of microstates. So entropy ends up being a measure of effectively how many microstates are associated with any particular sample. And remember also that entropy is a state function, so that the change in its final to initial conditions gives you the change in entropy. So we can end up with an expression delta s, the change in entropy is equal to k ln number of microstates final divided by number of microstates initial. And in general, entropy is going to increase with the number of microstates available. So the number of microstates and then therefore the total entropy tends to increase with increasing temperature, increasing volume, and increasing the number of independently moving molecules. So increasing the temperature increases the number of potential microstates uh, because increasing temperature increases the average kinetic energy, which means more possible kinetic energy values, uh, which means more possible different speeds and amounts of rotation and things like that, and therefore more microstates. Increasing the volume increases the number of microstates uh, because an increased volume means more possible physical locations for each of the molecules. And increasing the number of molecules increases the number of microstates simply because there are more molecules in the mix and that means that there are more molecules that can be moving and interacting and rotating and vibrating and things like that. We can also see that entropy is going to be related to the physical state of a molecule. So consider the example of water. Water can be a solid in the form of ice, it can be liquid water, and it can be water vapor, a gas. And entropy tends to increase with the freedom of motion of the molecules. If molecules can move more freely, they can be in more different complicated arrangements, they can have a wider range of kinetic energies, and therefore, in general, solids have less entropy than liquids, which has less entropy than gases. And by the same kind of arguments, uh, solutions are going to have entropies that are somewhere in between solids and liquids. And generally, when a solid dissolves, entropy increases. And this is because now not all of the solid is locked together in a crystal lattice. The molecules have separated, and now they might be interacting with water molecules when they're solvated, but they're still moving and more free to move than they were initially. So we can talk about entropy changes, a delta S. So in general, entropy increases when gases are formed from liquids or solids, when solutions are formed from solids and liquids, when the number of gas molecules increases, for example, in a reaction, and when the number of moles of different chemicals increases. We'll provide an example for each of these options. Consider liquid water forming liquid vapor. 
gaseous water, the molecules are far more separated, they have a higher temperature, they're moving more quickly, and they have more freedom of movement. And typically, they're less constrained in space because gases expand, all of which contribute to a larger entropy. Then consider a solution forming from salt and water. In this case, the salt is no longer trapped in a crystal lattice. The sodium and chloride ions are much more free to move because they've been solvated by the water. Again, entropy increases. Consider the hypothetical reaction of AB3 decomposing to form AB and B2. In this case, you're going from one mole of gas, one AB3, to making one mole of AB and one mole of B2. The number of moles of gases have increased and therefore the complexity is increased. And this example actually covers the final two options. The number of gases have increased, so the number of molecules with a very high degree of freedom of movement have increased, increasing the complexity, and the number of moles of anything has increased which increases the complexity in general. We should also talk about the third law of thermodynamics, and this says that the entropy of a pure crystalline substance at absolute zero is zero. And the reason for this is at absolute zero, or zero Kelvin, uh, there's only one possible microstate. Everything is locked entirely in place. There's no movement because there's zero kinetic energy. And that means you have to have a single microstate and therefore entropy is zero. And because we know that the ln of one is zero, this expression gives you S equals zero.